All right, if you guys have a question for Andrew Whitworth, please raise your hand and we will call on you. It looks like first we have Gary Klein from Los Angeles Times. Hi, Andrew, uh, congratulations on the award. Um, I know we, we all listened to the speech, but uh, just kind of in a nutshell here in the aftermath as it sinks in, um, what, do, what does it mean to you to be recognized for this particular award and what it represents? You know, I think it's just a really rare class of people who think about, you know, the great NFL players that have played this game and also been great ambassadors in their communities and, and the teams they played for off the football field. Um, it just means a lot. I mean, it's a, it's an amazing honor and it's, a, you know, very humbling to just even put yourself in, in the conversation with some of the guys that have won this award. I think of a mentor of mine in Cincinnati and Anthony Munoz, um, who won it a long, long time ago, but you know, it's, it's, uh, it's amazing to even, you know, think of that scenario. All right, next we'll go to Stu Jackson. Hey, Whit, uh, out of all of the outreach that you've done is, is there anything in particular that, um, you're most proud of, or that's, uh, I guess been, um, closest to your heart from a cause standpoint? I think I'm somebody that's always wanting to fight for for those that maybe don't have what others do or maybe didn't get the opportunity that others get. Um, so a lot of the times, probably some of the school stuff, I mean, putting STEM labs in schools, going to schools, loving on those kids, just making them feel special. And I can even think of 112th Street Elementary, you know, um, going and visiting there, as some people saw in that video after we won the NFC Championship back in 2018. And, and a lot of those kids kind of making comments like you'll never be back or this was really fun, but I think I'll never see you again. And then I got to go back and build the STEM lab there. And, and how many of them were like, wow, you, you came back. Like they, they didn't think that was possible, you know, that an athlete would one show up, but then two, he actually came back, saw him again. And um, I think to them, that was almost like a, okay, what you said that you care, you, you actually do care about us and you actually will come see us. And so, to me, that was one of those that really resonated like, hey, wow, like um, the, the effect you have is more than you think. All right, next we'll go to Christopher Heidel. Hi, Andrew, this is Chris Heidel from Hermitham Radio in Baltimore, Maryland. Congratulations on winning the Man of the Year Award. What does this award mean to you? Because I know there's a lot of cool people who in the, in the NFL has became Walter Payton Man of the Year. What does this mean for you and what does this mean for the organization? I think it's a great representation of the organization. I, I, like I said, I, you know, Cincinnati was a great place and, and we did a lot of great things in the community there too. But in a whole totality, I've just never seen, you know, in my limited experience with certain organizations, just the, the total group uh, that the Los Angeles Rams put together to always just be in the community, finding every little way they can possibly be around to help. Um, it, it's really impressive and it's been unbelievable the support we've had, whether we were fighting social justice issues last year um, with different things that really we were able to put together our own fund and make a big contribution financially and with our time throughout the community of LA. And then in the years past, whether it be different giveaways I want to do or different things I want to go make an impact in homelessness, um, they're right there with me as a partner, not 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 doing their own thing or not saying, hey, you know what, let's do this for publicity. But hey, what? how can we contribute? How can we put effort in? Um, for me, really, this this award is a symbolization of all of us, of everything we've done. And um, for me personally, um, you know, I, I think that uh, it's hard. It's hard to like say that you'd want this award just because I don't think that really goes into the whole idea of being somebody of community service. But I think it's um, an amazing accomplishment to, to, to really feel like, hey, there's people out there that value you and value your heart for people. And, and to me, that's just a confirmation of maybe you're doing the right things more so than, than anything I say I pat myself on the back about. All right, next we'll go to Jordan Rodriguez at The Athletic. Hey, Andrew, can you hear me? Yep, I got Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations, first and foremost. Um, I wonder how, how you found out about this uh, when you were told, uh, and if you've been able to yet, what was it like sort of sharing the news with Melissa? Um, yeah, I mean, kind of as I got here and, and they were pretty serious about what my uh, – you know, talk looked like on the prompter. I knew that probably meant there's a good sign. I might have a chance to win. 
Uh, but yeah, so it, you know, it's kind of one of those things, um, you know, you're waiting backstage, you hope you got it, you, you know, you hope that, and then all of a sudden they tell you, and, um, it's been really special for us. I mean, you know, the thing is, is that, you know, I hope that people realize it's, you know, I I've done some stuff in the community, but I mean, Melissa has been right there beside me and, and a lot of these things, you know, you know, probably 50, 50, maybe more of our, you know, her idea or her like, Hey, you know, what else could we go do? Or both of us looking up things in the community and, and kind of sending them to each other all the time. We will send a text like, Hey, have you read about this thing going on in the community or this restaurant that's struggling or this issue that, that people are talking about, or this event that maybe we could do something for, um, we kind of share those things back and forth. And, and then obviously, like I said, um, our kids are a huge part of it and we're looking for things we can get them involved with and we can show them what it means to go and serve your community. And so that means the utmost to us is that we, we have an opportunity to, to get them involved. All right, next we'll go to Jude Papillion. Hey, Andrew, Jude Papillon from the Tulane Hullabaloo. Can you talk about your Hurricane Ida relief efforts and how much it means to provide help in your home state? Yeah, we had the opportunity this year. We were looking to do something around homelessness in L.A. And then after the hurricane, really, uh, we saw what was going on down there in Louisiana. We were like, hey, why not just do both? I mean, I'd love to get involved, help out down there. You know, even though we can't be there, you know, maybe there's some way we can financially contribute. So we were able to kind of, you know, create an opportunity to give some money back down there to help with restoration, kind of join with a restoration company down there. Um, I mean, excuse me, foundation down there and, and start to do stuff with them. And then. Really, you know, uh, to us, it was like I had lived my senior year was Hurricane Katrina in Louisiana. And my wife, Melissa, was a news anchor at the time in Louisiana. So we knew well about that experience. And, and really, I myself living down there at the time really lived through it and, and understood all the things that happened and, and how horrible and how stressful it was on people. So once we heard that happen, we were like, hey, how can we just kind of combine these things and make sure we find a way to not only take care of the place we live now, but where we come from, we're making sure that we're finding a way to show a little love to them as well. All right, last question, Michael Gelkin, Dallas Morning News. Andrew, congratulations. I wanted to ask you about something that you mentioned in your speech. It was about the importance of not just being vocal on social media. It's important not just to make a difference with your words. It's more about action. The evolution yeah. of that for you, because some NFL players, it can take a little while to settle into being active in their community. When did you first turn words into actions? Did that take some time for you? Or what was that process like to get a feel for how you would make a difference? I think you're going to make me feel dated. But, you know, honestly, when I started out, <laughs> the only way you could get involved was action because there, was, there wasn't any – social media or anything to uh, just talk about, right? I mean, you had, if you wanted, if there was an event going on, you had to go get your hands dirty and help them build a playground, or you had to go help do whatever it is or show up, you show your face and talk at a school. I mean, that was really how you really got a chance to even do anything. I mean, Instagram, Twitter, all that wasn't really uh, the thing when I was a rookie in 2006. So really for me, I had to start that way. And then I realized at some point in my career, as I got older, and I was involved in the community a lot. Then I started realizing like, oh man, am I starting to only really like post or help share or talk about those things on social media? And it's like, I need to get back to, to what's real action and like actually take steps, like use use my platform, use my voice, use use my finances and the, and the blessing I've had to play this game, use my hands and, and my body and my mind and go and be in these classrooms and talk to kids about education and talk about believing in themselves. And so, you, you know, you start realizing like, wow, okay, wait a minute. Am I only doing one thing? And that's my point is there's a lot of great things about social media. There's a lot of great things about being able to bring awareness. I'm not saying you have to stop that, but make sure that what you're doing is like, Hey, I'm going to bring some awareness. And for those young guys, I would say, just find a way to do something. I remember when we had, uh, here are the fires in 2018, and then we had the shooting in Thousand Oaks uh, that really the, our Los Angeles Rams community um, experienced, you know, in, in such a tragedy. I remember I got a chance to talk to the team, and one of the things I told them was, is you'll never regret just making something about more than yourself. Like, you'll never look back and go, like, hey, you know what, in an adverse time, in a tragedy, I just, like, 
went and loved on somebody. Maybe you go sit by some families that are hurting and just tell them you're thinking about them. Maybe you get involved financially. Maybe you go show up for them. You know, whatever it is, you'll never regret just doing something. It doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to be the perfect thing or the big thing that people are going to talk about in the media. It can just be something. Just do just do one little thing and you'll never regret it. And, and hopefully that'll build you a platform to, to speak from. And so I think that um, to me, that's the most important thing. Just do that little thing. Don't don't try to beat it up and find the perfect thing. Just just put some action out there and, and maybe you'll find that, man, wow, this was rewarding and I'd love to keep doing it. All right. That's it for you, Andrew. Thanks, everybody. Thank you all.